Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Probably Got This, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can improve as a DPS class in the Elder Scrolls Online by telling you tips, strategies, and covering all the basics you need to know about the DPS role and how it works in ESO. We also go over some beginner sets as well so you can know what to look out for when you reach the end game of ESO and as you level through your playthrough in ESO. Before we get started, I want to mention, if you want to watch me play live, I stream on twitch.tv slash probably got this every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also join our Discord and our second guild, the Necropapas. The links to the Twitch and the Discord are in the description as well. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram where you can stay up to date as well for my content. That is in the description as well. So I released an animation canceling guide last Friday, so I thought that of my first three uh, beginner role guides, I would go over the DPS one first since... Uh, animation canceling is important for DPS and since it is fresh on your mind. That video is linked in the description and at the top of the screen. If you haven't checked that out yet, you can definitely do that. Make sure to go over and see what that's about. So again, we are going to go over what DPS is in ESO, what the role entails and your responsibilities, the strategies and tips with the class itself. This includes setting up your bar, basics, knowing what content you're in, taking, taking synergies, and knowing executes and things of that sort, and beginner sets for DPS. The timestamps will be available in the description as well. All my beginner role guides will be set up similarly to this when I get to the tank and the healer as well. First up is what is DPS in ESO? Well, this may seem very simple to some of you, but for those of you that don't know, DPS is the damage dealer of the game, and in ESO there are two types of damage dealers. There are magicka-focused ones and stamina-focused ones. Magicka focused ones will put all their attribute points typically in Magicka, and stamina ones will put them all into stamina like my character here. I have 64 points into stamina. Doing damage is done by using skill abilities and light attacking and heavy attacking. More on that later as we get into why light and heavy attacks are important, but in dungeons you typically run two DPS, one healer and one tank. In trials or rage you run eight DPS, two healers and two tanks typically. Damage dealers or DPS and ESO are very crucial to the end game because if you do not do enough damage, you will not clear certain activities. But DPS and ESO have a myriad of responsibilities that also apply that are not just doing damage. And I wanna go into those now. So what the role entails in your responsibilities, the first and most crucial thing a DPS must do is stay alive or don't die. Again, if you are a dead DPS, you aren't doing any sort of damage whatsoever. So how can you lower the chances of dying? Well, another responsibility that plays onto that is not running into the fight first. This is the tank's job to initiate, and if you want to check out my beginner dungeon guide, I go over all that as well. It is in the description. If you have seen that video, this part is sort of a refresher course for you. Another responsibility is to make sure you don't taunt the bosses, which means to draw their aggro. So don't put a skill that specifically says this will taunt the enemy, or don't do a heavy attack with an ice staff because this will taunt the enemy as well. In my tank roll guide coming out soon, I will go into taunts in detail a lot more, so stay tuned for that. Next responsibility is interrupting certain mechanics in group content or by yourself, aka being aware. This is what it looks like when an enemy is doing something that is interruptible. Bash that enemy or use an interrupt skill like uh, it's like the morph of force shock and um, venom arrow, which is in the bow line if you are a stamina character. This is something that DPS will have to do in certain in-game dungeons or trials because the tanker healer will be busy doing other important things. Also, you will always have more DPS than healers and tanks, so you can usually have one DPS handle these mechanics. Next thing is, as the DPS, make sure you are reviving players. This is crucial and a lesson that a lot of people do not understand or know. But in hard content, as a DPS, it is your job to revive players. For the most part because remember unless you are in a wipe mechanic on a boss where you need to be damaging or you're going to wipe the whole team your damage can always be put on hold for a few seconds but healing and tanking can't because if it is it is usually wipe city for your team next mechanic is part of being aware and not standing in death circles be aware guys do not stand in an aoe that's sitting there and gives you a notification like oh this aoe is going to go off just don't face tank those things. Move out of the AoEs. That is one way to really piss off your healers, so make sure you do not do that. Next responsibility is try to stay still as much as you can. I know that sometimes you have to move around, obviously, 
but some fights you really can stay still. This is a bad habit that I have sometimes and I have gotten a lot better at it, but this is really crucial in a lot of trials because what that does is it allows your healer to heal the group more effectively because they can target the group easier if you aren't YOLOing in circles around the boss. Believe me, this happens a lot. I've seen people circle the boss and a lot of times that can really frustrate your healer please do not be a merry-go-round unless you have to. Because again, if you stand still and you're in a trial, the healer will be able to hit most of your group with everything they need to hit you with. It's just, it's really hard for a healer sometimes to when everyone is spread out. The last thing is mastering your rotation. Again, I have an animation canceling video that shows you tips on this, but as a DPS, you need to try to master this. It is harder to master your rotation than it is to master healing and tanking. It's harder to learn tanking and healing, but once you figure it out, you really can do it. You seriously can. But DPS is very hard to master and hit those high DPS numbers. Try your best to learn it and keep practicing and getting better. This will benefit you in every way for harder content. Now we're gonna talk about the strategies and tips with the DPS class itself. This is going to cover a lot of topics here, but I think beginner DPS players need to know this. Let's talk about the basics first though. You will have one skill bar first unlocked, as you see right here, but when you hit 15, you will unlock a second bar. You will also get five skills on all of these bars and you will get an ultimate on each bar. Most skills in the game are instant cast skills. So if you see right here, Brawler is an instant cast. There are some channeled skills that you'll need to just pay attention to what those are. So right here, Wrecking Blow is a channeled uh, skill. Technically it's 0.8 seconds cast time. It's not as long as some channeled abilities, but it's technically not an instant cast skill. The other form of combat for a DPS is light attacking and heavy attacking. This system in ESO is very important. You can't or don't auto attack in this game. You have to specifically click. So if I wanna go attack this, I have to click, 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 click. And then heavy attack, click, click. I cannot just auto attack in this game. These are very important to doing damage in ESO. That's why I made an animation canceling guide to show you how to do these effectively. But basically light attacks can do a lot of damage overall so light attacking is also a way that you can restore your ultimate. Heavy attacks when doing them will restore resources to the corresponding weapon. So staves will return magicka and melee weapons and bows will return stamina. Learning how to weave these and utilize heavy attacks can help you sustain more effectively and efficiently. And it can increase overall damage output. Sustain, if you're wondering, is basically how long you can sustain your resource pool before it runs out. So if you are Magicka and you run out of Magicka, you won't do as much damage. So keeping that resource pool high is important to overall damage output for DPS. So on the topic of sustain, we are going to go into a bunch of different things that can help you sustain longer and help you increase DPS. These could also be coined not only to help sustain, but to just help you be more effective as a DPS. So. First, let's talk about setting up your bar effectively so you know where your abilities are. So I go over this a little bit in my animation canceling guide. But what this means is make sure you slot your abilities where you feel most comfortable having them. If you follow a build online, the theory crafter may have their bar set up one way and that way is the way that works for them. Make sure to experiment and see if you can find a bar set up to your liking. For example, if I go into my bar here on my stamina sorcerer, okay? I have my bound ornaments ability set up on my mouse button four on my mouse, and I have it on this bar as well on that. The reason I have it there is so it's just in my mind and it's muscle memory. I don't usually use the second ability on bound ornaments, but I do that because it's right next to my bar switch. I go over that again in my animation canceling guide, but I have it set up on mouse button four just because it's an easy click and I don't have to move my hands to click some of the number buttons. Then I put my bow ability on the one because that's usually where I put a lot of my bow abilities um, for the most part, or I put it where it's very easily accessible for my hand to reach up and click the button. Uh, and then I put my other AOE or damage over time, the hurricane on five, because I just have to keep that one up at all times. And five is where I usually put like fire breath or noxious breath. And so I put it on five. And sometimes I do put poison injection on my mouse button four, but for this build, I like it on three. I put Brawler on three because it is a damage over time, just like Poison Injection is. And I put one of my spammable skills, which we will go over here in a second, Wrecking Blow on four, my Execution on one, and I put this heal or uh, like buff basically on five, kind of like my Hurricane. So they all correspond 
to one another and it helps me and it builds muscle memory. That's what I mean by setting up effectively. Find the way it works for you and set it up to your benefit. Again, if you want my mouse or if you're looking for a mouse, a good gaming mouse, I have my kit linked in the description. You can look at all the equipment I use. The mouse I have is something I highly recommend, so definitely check that out in the description. Next is knowing when to use what skills. What I mean by that are some skills are only great to use if you target say less than a 50% health or even a 25% health enemy. Those are called executes for your skills. Knowing what skills you should be using in your rotation may actually help your rotation because it adds one less skill you need to activate each time around. So for instance, if you look at this reverse slice skill, it says, spin around and strike an enemy down, dealing 3,835 physical damage, deals up to 300% more damage to enemies with less than 50%. So I never use this or I try not to ever use this when enemies or a boss is not under 50%, okay? Instead, I'll use Wrecking Blow, okay? And I'll talk about that here in a second. So with Reverse Slice, again, I do not need to be using this in my rotation until I hit 50% health. So use executes when it's time to use them, not any other times. The next thing is a spammable skill versus a damage over time skill. Know which skills are spammable and use them accordingly. Again, on this character, this ability right here, Wrecking Blow, is a spammable, okay? This is a spammable until I get to 50% health and then my execute becomes my spammable. What a spammable means is, is you're going to spam the ability. You're going to keep using it over and over and over without using a different ability. That's what a spammable is. But let's talk about damage over time. Damage over time effects are like Arrow Barrage, Poison Injection, and Brawler, okay? You're not gonna sit there and spam Poison Injection. You're not, because this is additional 7,230% poison damage over 10 seconds. Again, you see here it says deals 100% more damage to enemies under 50% health. So this is sort of an execute in some way, and so you need to make sure you have that up when they are under 50% health. But Error Barrage is a damage over time effect, and Brawler is a damage over time effect. You're not going to spam these abilities. Part of the reason is the cost of stamina it cost, and plus it's just not gonna do as much damage if you spam this ability versus this. This is supposed to just stay on the target, and once it runs out, you then use it again. So all of the previous examples are what make up your rotation as a damage dealer. So knowing when to activate these things and minimizing waste of resources will help you do better as a damage dealer and learn your role. The next thing I wanna talk about, which is something that not enough beginners know about, is activating synergies when they are there. These are secondary effects basically from other players' skills that will grant resources back to you and do some other effect based on the skill when you activate it. You can only activate a synergy, I believe, every like 20 seconds or so. So every 20 seconds is a long time. If your healers or DPS or tanks are doing their skills properly, there will be tons of synergies on the ground. So don't worry about taking someone else's synergy. There should be another one for the next person. These are things that many people will actively choose to ignore in fights, but yet they will take the synergies on a trial dummy in the guild hall. Taking these will increase your sustain and your DPS effectively. You see right here, you have Mythic who is fighting the trial dummy, and you see that green aura that popped up. That is the synergy. So people will take these synergies, and they will do the rotations on these trial dummies, and then after that, they won't do that in the fight in their dungeons. And that doesn't make any sense because if you, if you do it on the dummy, but you don't do it in the fight, it's not giving you an accurate representation. And it tremendously helps you. There is no downside to taking synergies. There are actually sets that are good that benefit from you taking synergies. Next thing is make sure to have your buff food active. This is food that will give you a flat buff to health, stamina, magicka, depending on which build you're going for, magicka or stamina, and sometimes give recovery of resources depending on the food you have. So for instance, I have uh, on this character for my buff food, I run uh, Dubious Camoran Throne, which is increases stamina recovery by 315, max stamina by 2856, and max health by 3094 for two hours. Sometimes I will run a, uh, a blue food, I think. I don't have it on here now, but it's like uh, just one that increases my stamina and, uh, and health by like a thousand more than that for two hours. So that's something 
that you need to have, and I get uh, get a lot of crap in my Twitch chat about that because a lot of times I like run into a dungeon on like a new character, and I don't have any buff food because all my buff food is on my other characters, and I don't have any for that level. So it's kind of funny sometimes, but definitely make sure you use your buff food. You will definitely need that in in-game content. Buff food can be bought on traders and made. If you've got 50 provisioning, uh, you can make all the buff food you basically need to make. Next thing is something that is more important when you hit CP 160, but start practicing it now when you are new. Use your potions. I can't say that enough. Some people don't think potions help or they use them to restore resources. Don't use them to give you the bonus that they get from like spell power cure where it increases like, you know, resources back and everything. You want to use the spell power cure potion to increase your damage because that's what it's supposed to do. So make sure you're using them for damage output if you have them on like you know the crown store try restore potions and you're doing like solo content you know i understand using them for that but you want to use them to increase damage and that's what they're there for a lot of times so something i want to show you though is with the alchemy skill line you want to unlock this um, like i said if you watch my guide in my in the description you can uh you need to get medicinal use and uh it's when using potions resulting effects last 30 percent longer this will let your potions basically have 100 percent uptime almost every single time you know use it so like essence of spell power this grants major sorcery, increases your spell damage by 20% for 47.7 seconds. And it obviously has a cooldown, but a lot of people only try to use this to restore magicka, but you need to be using it for the buff that it actually gives you. Because it also grants you major intellect, increases your magic recovery by 20% for 47.6 seconds. That is huge in higher end PvE. And I'm telling you, it's definitely something that a lot of people overlook. I'm, and I'm also going to say, I sometimes even forget to use these because you get caught up in your rotation and that's easy to forget. So try to make it a habit now with some low-level potions that you have. And that way, when you get towards the end game, you are kind of uh, knowing what you're doing with that. The last thing I want to mention before we go into beginner DPS sets are to know what content you are playing. And what I mean by this is if you are playing solo, you may need to switch some skills on your bar. You may need to learn other play styles. So if I'm a Magicka character, like on my Magicka Dragonite here, I may need to put Harness Magicka on, which is in the Light Armor skill line, which gives me basically a huge shield if I'm playing solo. I also may need to put other shields or heals on that can help me when I'm playing solo. But if I'm in a group setting and we are doing in-game content, if you have a healer and a tank that are putting up insane shields and insane healing, you don't need to necessarily use Harness Magicka or like, uh, like a, a buff that you may have on your bar because you may be getting that buff from your other players. You need to switch those flexible skills out that can uh, for other damaging skills or other things that can benefit the group or yourself with your damage. This is something you're going to have to feel out depending on your group and how experienced you know your healers or tanks are because they may be able to help you have an uptime of certain abilities that you might not even need to put on your bar. So definitely check that out when you're with a group and see if you need to do that for harder content. Now let's get into the final part of the video and that's beginner sets for DPS. Now I won't possibly cover every single set, but I want to list a few that are either easy to obtain in dungeons, easy to buy or craft, and easy to use. So for Magicka DPS, the beginner sets in my opinion for craftable ones are Julianos, Spell Parasite, and Magnus's Gift. Julianos is in Rothgar, Spell Parasite is in Blackreach, and Magnus's Gift is in Rivenspire, Greenshade, and Shadowfin. So right here is Julianos I'm gonna show you. So we go to Rothgar, Julianos is right there. If we go to uh, Skyreach, you'll see, or not Skyreach, wow, Blackreach. Um, where is it at? Right here, Spell Parasite is in Blackreach. And then if we go to the Magnus's Gift, which is in Rivenspire, Green Shade. So if we go to Rivenspire, Max's Gift is right here in Rivenspire. Um, if we go to Green Shade, Max's Gift is right here. And then if then if we go to Shadowfin, Max's Gift is right here. Now, buyable or farmable sets are Spell Strategist and Spinners. Spell Strategist is in PvP, and Spinners is obtained by farming overland things in Malbator, like bosses, delves, dolmens, and chests. And again, these sets can be bought from guild traders. Then a beginner dungeon set for Magicka is Burning Spellweave, which quite honestly I still use because I love it. You can farm City of Ash 1 for this in the base game, and it's pretty easy dungeon to do. For monster sets for Magicka DPS, I would say Lambrus or Lambrus or however you say it, Grothdar and Iceheart are all good beginner monster helms. 
If you want to watch my in-depth Undaunted guide, I, I talk in detail about monster sets and other things related to the Undaunted skill line. It will be in the description and, and at the top of the screen. But Lambrus is from Vet Crypt of Hearts 1, Grothar is from Vet Vaults of Madness, and Iceheart is from Vet Direfrost Keep. Now for stamina crafted sets, you can get Hunting's Rage and Night Mother's Gauge for craftable ones. Hunting's Rage is in Bankarai, Reaper's March, and the Rift. Night Mother's is in Bankarai, Reaper's March, and the Rift. So if I go to Bankarai, the Night Mother's Gaze table is right there, and the Hunting's Rage table is right there. If I go to Reaper's March, the Hunting's Rage, ta Rage table is right there, and the Night Mother's Gaze table is right there. And if I go to the Rift, the Night Mother's Gaze table is right there, and the Hunting's Rage table is right there. And I do want to say that my guild hall at my house has all of these craftable sets as well. So you don't even have to go to these zones if you're in our two guilds. The obtainable sets through farming and trading for stamina is Spriggins, which is in Bankrai Overland, or Briarheart, which is in Rothgar. These, again, can be bought on traders as well. The dungeon beginner set, in my opinion, is Automaton from Darkshade Caverns. And I would even say Viper Sting from Fungal Grotto 1 isn't too bad as well. For monster sets, I would say Selene's from Selene's Web on Vet and Crag from Fungal Grotto 1 on Vet. Even Iceheart for stamina as well. Now, real quick, the traits on all this armor, you want Divines because it increases your Moondestone effects. And your Moondestone that you want if you are a Stamina Magicka DPS, for the most part, is Shadow Moondestone. We have that in our guild hall, I believe, as well. For stamina, you want all medium armor and even on the monster sets for the most part. For Magicka, you want all light armor and heavy armor on the head and medium armor on the shoulder for the most part to get certain passives. For traits on your weapons, as Magicka, you usually want Nernhone infused or precise. For stamina, you usually want Nernhone infused or sharpened. Again, I will have my beginner trait video in the description as well if you want a more in-depth version of that and more explanation. But that is it, you all. I hope that this beginner DPS role guide helped you understand this class a little better. I hope that it helps you improve as a damage dealer, and I hope that it makes the class more enjoyable for you. It is very fun and rewarding to master your DPS class because it does take time and patience, and once you do, it rewards you very handily. But knowing these pointers and tips, I know will help you out and not feel so overwhelmed. Again, if you want to stop by my Twitch channel and watch me play live, I stream on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash probably got this. And you can join our Discord and our second guild, the Necropoppas. The Twitch link and the Discord will be in the description. And my social media links for Instagram and Twitter are there as well. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, and heavy attack that bell icon if you like this content and want to stay up to date when I do more giveaways and post new videos. But until next time, have faith, be great, and I'll see you on ESO.